Hi everybody, today we are having a chat about the F-35 and we are starting right now. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. I have been involved recently in a number of discussions with people mainly on Reddit about the F-35, if it was good, if it was bad, if it was cheap, if it was expensive and all these kind of things. So I thought it is probably better to have a short video just to explain what I think about this new plane which is so controversial. What I think about this machine is that it is well, actually three machines, because the commonality of components is just 20%. But I believe that all the three machines, in terms of capabilities, are outstanding. Some of their capabilities are really unique, and they're probably the most modern in the world. So, from this point of view, definitely well done. However, there have been plenty of uh, critique about this program and about the plane. One of the main points is that the program itself was extremely, extremely expensive. Well, from my point of view, every program is expensive and it couldn't have been different because it was a program that included a number of new and untested technologies so it was basically unavoidable that the development was going to be very expensive and it was also unavoidable to go over budget it always happens in this kind of extremely large and very very complex programs i would dare say that probably there cannot be a more complex program than building a top of the line fighter plane they also say that the plane itself is particularly expensive. Well, apart from the fact that the price is going down a little bit, again, it's the consequence of having some unique capabilities. And anyway, money is less of a problem in this context than is normally thought. Another point that is often mentioned was the fact that the program took a very long time from the initial inception to the first deliveries and even the first deliveries were not really battle -ready. Again, this is a consequence of the choice that has been made to integrate this large array of new technologies in the plan. Delays, unforeseen circumstances, uh, problems of each kind are unavoidable in this kind of projects. That's just a fact of life. Another point that is often considered back practice was the fact that some program management decisions have uh, been, well, definitely not particularly successful. For example, the decision of having a low initial production rate when the aircraft still had very little capabilities didn't really make sense. Some issues, some issues like the uh, opening of the hatch of the cannon causing an undesired yo or the unexpected aerodynamic loss of lift during very tight turn have been fixed most of the time just by software rather than actually imposing limitation rather than doing the kind of redesign that could have been uh, useful. Yes, these have been mistakes in the interest of the program, but the, the people who took these decisions obviously didn't make mistakes according to their perspective of the program, but to the benefit of actually having the plane in service, they were not ideal decisions. However, now that the plane is entering service, the consequences of these decisions are actually fading away and they will probably be of no further influence on the service of the plane. So yes, a problem, but definitely no big deal in the grand scheme of things. However, from my point of view, there are other points that are definitely weak points and they haven't really been considered as such when the program was started, but because they're probably a bit outside as usual from the common thinking. 
The first problem that I see in having the three F-35s is that they share pretty much the same systems. From a military capability point of view, they're all three similar. Plus, the F-35 is supposed to replace a lot of legacy planes and it has also been sold to a number of European air forces, which means that a lot of countries, at least in the West, will be flying exactly the same plane. The risk with this is that if one countermeasure is found that is capable of actually reducing or making uh, one of the critical F-35 capabilities not real effective anymore, pretty much this capability goes away all the Western Air Forces. Actually, defending from just one type of threat is easier than defending of a mul from multiple types of threats. Now you would say this is very unlikely and well the logistical advantages that are present by the fact that everybody's on a standardized machine probably outweigh this possibility. From my point of view I keep thinking that new technologies normally work but not as well as expected. Things that are considered to be invulnerable, they turn out to be vulnerable if you think out of the box. So with a number of brilliant minds in some countries that I think will spend their days on how to create problems to the F-35, I wouldn't be so sure. The second problem that I see is sovereignty. All the F-35 through the ALIS are pretty much in a large big network uh, and they share their data. Already my program partners have uh, uh, complained by the fact that data that are considered sovereign data are going to be uh, provided to the Americans and there are solutions that are going to be put in place for this. Uh, but still, it is a plane that still requires um, a lot of manufacturers and uh, American in general intervention. The mission data files are produced only in the United States, for example, and they are essential for using the plane uh, at its best. So, if a country would ever want to use the plane in a context in which the United States do not approve, uh, which may well happen, because every country has its own uh, interests, yeah, that may be a problem. The third and final problem that I see with the F-35 concept is the fact that it relies extremely heavily on network-centric warfare. What does it mean? It means that it relies on communication with different assets and among other F-35. Uh, this is a powerful, powerful force multiplier. If it is working, it is definitely incredibly effective. The level of situational awareness that the F-35s provide to the pilot is reported to be really unprecedented and from what is known about the plane I, it's easy to believe but you may not expect in a near peer confrontation that all the assets that are required for this are going to be in place so this is my thinking about the f-35 i hope i have made clear what i think about the plane and i hope i have given you some ideas to think about, some food for thought. So, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.